by the nature of the industry, there's people getting in and out every day. Um, so it makes sense to allow yeah. a business to get up to that level. And, and Mr. Farber, you brought up registration fees, and I saw you nodding over there. You're in agreement with that. You had said something earlier about having a difference between the big companies and the little co companies. We agree that the registration fee should not apply to companies with sales uh, below a million dollars, and that's the how the fee provision in, in Mr. Pallone's bill is drafted. So the, the million dollars is, is – everybody seems to think that's okay. Yes. Ms. Renfury, we were talking about earlier, and, and – uh, the chairwoman said something about she sprayed something on her half, which you know it was bad or whatever. And you said, don't spray. <laughs> you want to explain that? Well, you were asking the question of whether or not uh, there were harmful ingredients in fragrance. And one of the things that we know is we, we always say to people, if you're going to wear a fragrance, maybe put it on your clothes, not on your body, because phthalates, which is one of the um, classes of chemicals that are most harmful to health, are used to bind the fragrance to your skin. So it may not be the actual fragrance, but what it is being used to bind it to your skin. And so, yes, I would avoid. Uh, there are a lot of harmful ingredients in fragrances we've all discussed. And you weren't making any comment then about just using sprays in general? I was not making comments about user sprays in general. I was speaking to the fact that I would avoid spraying it on your body if you can. And, and the reason I ask is my wife used sprays from time to time, and they drive me crazy. Um, <laughs> well, I'll be I don't want to get in a fight I, with your wife. Yeah, but I, would, I get, I get, I would, I get I would, a blast of whatever it is. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I do think it's important that we look at some of this, but I also have concerns because sometimes when we give authority to a, a, a regulatory agency, they get carried away. And I have uh, uh, people who sell at the farmer's markets. I, I represent a, a fairly rural district, 29 jurisdictions, and they sell uh, goat soap and goat hand cream that they raise their own goats and they milk the goats and then they make it uh, themselves. They're right up your alley. I'm not sure they're even members of an association, but they're making small batches. And, you know, if you go in, as you indicated, Ms. O'Donnell, in your testimony, if, if you happen to be at the farmer's market and you say, well, I want fragrance free, they say, well, I'll be back next week with some of that for you. Right. Or if you ask for a particular type. So uh, one of the things I'm, I'm curious about is if we can have, because I had this situation with suckers in a different world where they were taking an over-the-counter FDA-approved uh, cough syrup and mixing it in with the candy and FDA came in and said no you can't do that anymore and they walked away from a 50 year uh, it was a part of their candy business they just said we can't we can't hire three people and build a lab for this sucker product and put that basically put that one employee of that small company in Bristol Virginia the Helms Candy Company just put them out of doing that kind of work they just quit um, and so that's my concern. Is that your concern as well, Ms. Ms. O'Donnell, that they might get carried away? And, and could we come up with some kind of language that protects, if, I'm, if you're buying from the big company something that's already been approved, that you can use it in your handcrafted product or in your small company to then sell without you having to worry about having studies or tests, et cetera? Absolutely. I, I think that we have to be careful of what burdens we put on small businesses, both for not only their, the, the money that they have to spend to comply, but also their time, because a time to a small business is, is money. You mm -hmm. know? So we definitely, looking at you know, consumer safety, it has to make sense for consumer safety, but it also has to make sense to allow the small business to keep operating. Um, having, um, for example, in the in the GMP guidelines, uh, the you know the volunteer guidelines that are out now, um, there's a requirement to have a chemist on staff, and that's not something that a small business obviously can can comply with. So it just has to be meaningful yep. regulation that they can they can comply with. And that is very similar to what happened to the the small candy company for that one little area. They were required to have people on staff to test something that they'd never had a problem with, they'd never had a bad reaction, they'd been mixing up the same formula for 50 years, and all of a sudden they're told, you, you can't do that unless you have chemists or people who are going to test this on every batch every day, and they couldn't afford it. Right. So that's what, I, that's what I want to make sure we're not doing. I thank you, Madam Chair, and I yield back. We thank the gentleman. He yields back.